This week marks the second anniversary of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. With recent Russian advances in the east of the country and with the US delaying new funding to support Kyiv, concerns are growing about how long the war will drag on and whether Ukraine will have enough weapons and soldiers to keep fighting. Our correspondent Andrew Harding visited the town of Liman one year ago. Now he's returned to find out how the people who live there are coping. How do you judge the mood of a country this big and this broken? We've come back to a frontline town, Liman, a place seized by Russian forces and then liberated by Ukraine back in 2022. Since then, the closest front lines have remained just up the road. This was Alexander a year ago with his cats. Alexander. Yes. Andrew from BBC. Today, he's still here. Listen, listen for you, Yes, I remember you, he says. He shows me the wreckage of his old apartment block hit by Russian missiles. And he says he sees this war differently now. I want peace, peace, peace. So has your opinion changed? Changed. Change. So this is interesting. He's changed his opinion over the course of the last year. Before he said Ukraine had to win this war. Now he's saying there's been too much death, too much suffering. He wants talks, even if it means giving up land. Peace is more important than victory. You can feel the weariness on the streets of Liman. British aid distributed here, mostly to pensioners who ignore the sound of another explosion on the front lines. Our youth are being exterminated. If this continues, there'll be no Ukraine left, says Nadezhda. This war will go on for a long time yet, says Pasha. But it's not all gloom here. Council workers are out doing what they can and a younger generation is just getting on with life. School is mostly online, but not entirely. <laughs> I've got everything I need, she says. A year ago, we found families hiding from the war in these cellars. And today, the Dmitrenko family are still here. But there's regular electricity now, Water from a pump outside, and Irina, an accountant, is quietly determined. We're waiting for victory, she says. We are all tired, but I don't see how we can negotiate with murderers. Still, Liman's mayor is worried that America will stop supplying weapons to the Ukrainian troops protecting his town. We're fighting a monster, says Alexander Zhuravlyov. So we need more outside military help. Our soldiers are doing their best, but they're running out of guns and ammunition. This small town feels torn between determination and despair. What unites it now is sheer exhaustion, the knowledge that this war will not be quickly won, and increasingly the fear that Ukraine's fate may yet be decided by foreign politicians in faraway capitals. Andrew Harding, BBC News in eastern Ukraine.